Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. All right, uh, we got some mailbag questions here. Mailbag at WrestlingObserver.com. Let's do some. This person here says, does TNA still have a partnership with New Japan now that they are partners with WWE? Um, they haven't had anyone from New Japan um, in a while. Um, I mean, New Japan works with any, with everyone. Um, but, yeah, since they've worked with WWE, they haven't, they haven't done anything with New Japan. But I don't know that... I don't know that that would be unforgivable. Um, you know, I mean, some of it... You know, it's a weird... It's a lot of weird politics. Um, you know, AEW, perhaps... Perhaps they would complain. I mean, New Japan... You know, I mean, it's it's possible that they wouldn't. Um, I mean, they're not enemies with WWE, but they're they're certainly not uh, aligned with them either. So, um, yeah, um, we have yeah we haven't seen anyone from uh, from New Japan in uh, in uh, TNA lately. So I don't know. Sports News says WWE recently uploaded Takeshi Morishima's tryout matches in 2008 on YouTube. I was wondering why they'd ever hired him after those matches, and where is he at these days? Well, he's retired long. He's long since retired due to health issues, among other things. So I actually could tell you that because the day after the tryouts, um, I talked to someone at the top in WWE, and Vince took one look at him, and he thought that it was so disrespectful that the guy showed up and his body looked the way it did, even though that's how his body looked. And I mean, he was an awesome worker in that, in those days. He was a great working big guy, like, you know, Terry Gordy ish, but Vince saw that body. And, and it wasn't even, it wasn't even like, Oh, whatever. I mean, it was like, it was like an adamant. This guy was so disrespectful trying out for our company looking like that without even getting in shape. So there's your answer. Vince was very negative. And he wasn't the only one. I mean, I talked to people there who, um, you know, when I explained that you know, that's what he looks like and he's awesome, and it was just like that that was the word by Vince. And once that word is out, that's what everybody repeated. You know, you can't contradict the man because he's always right back in those days. But, uh, yeah, 100%, 100% physique. This person here says, Dave, you wrote that Bruno wanted to do a Shea Stadium show where he would lose to Andre the Giant. You also wrote that Vince Sr. nixed it because he didn't want all babyface main event. Who do you think was right? What do you think that match could have drawn? I don't know what it could have drawn. Um, it's a different era. Back then, you know, you know, like they did Bruno and Pedro as a babyface babyface match, and it did 22,500 people. And they were very disappointed in that at Shea. I mean, there was, the weather was bad and all that, but it was really disappointing and really, you know, Vince Sr. was very adamant about babyface, babyface matches after that. And um, it wasn't necessarily for Shea, but I think that, that would have been Bruno's idea. But Bruno, I mean, Bruno went to him with it, and Vince said, no way. And Bruno, Bruno um, told him that he wanted to lose, and Vince was like, no way. You know, Vince did not. One of the things is Vince never wanted Bruno to lose. I mean, he had to lose to Superstar Graham, you know, with the feet on the ropes to change the title and obviously the Ivan Koloff match. I mean, those were the only pins the guy took um, after whatever it was, you know, 63 or probably even earlier than that. I mean, Vince wanted Bruno San Martino to be the superhero that never lost, and he did not want him losing to Andre the Giant. And um, he absolutely wasn't going to let Andre lose because he booked Andre all over the world, and he made a lot of money, um, you know, for his percentage when he would book Andre all over the world. So Andre, I mean, with Vince, Vince, you know, you know, you could not beat Andre. That was Vince's rules, um, even though the Sheik did, you know, threw the fire and beat him and everything. But, um, you know, that's the Sheik, and he got away with it somehow. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, Vince was adamant. You know, he told Bruno in certain terms that... that He's not going to beat either one of them, and he wants them both as attractions that never lose. And uh, that was that. That was that was the one. I mean, Vince didn't want Bruno and Zabisco. Um, he was, you know, he thought Larry did not have it in him. He was not at that level. Um, Larry and Bruno begged. Bruno really pushed hard. 
and they got it done and it ended up being the biggest feud of Bruno's career and actually the biggest program, house show program, that uh, Vince Sr. ever promoted in his entire career. But Vince Sr. was against that one. Um, the other one I remember him being against was Ken Patera, for whatever reason. Because I remember Bruno telling me, it's like, uh, Bruno was a big fan of Ken Patera because, you know, Bruno's a strong man. Ken Patera was very, very strong. You know, I mean, Olympic weightlifter and everything. And, uh, you know, Bruno thought that, that you know, the heel Ken Patera and him could draw pretty well. And they did well. But uh, for whatever reason, that was not one of uh, Vince's father's um, favorites. You know, he just didn't, we didn't see Patera what Bruno did. But they did well. I, I mean, actually did very well. And so well, in fact, that uh, when Bruno was going to lose, um, I mean, Superstar was definitely the guy that they wanted. But if it wasn't Superstar, probably would have been Patera. All right, I got one for you. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, WrestleMania 40. Uh, the ticket on sale date last year was August 18th. Mm-hmm. The uh, WrestleMania 41, we don't know when the tickets are going on sale, but it should be fairly soon. But mm-hmm. we do know where it's at, Las Vegas, mm-hmm. Legion Stadium. You know, it's going to go on sale. People are going to buy their tickets and everything like that. Yeah, and, they have really high, really high ticket prices. I bet the ticket prices are way up from last year. Yeah. And uh, Wembley Stadium, they put tickets on sale back in December this year. Mm-hmm. You know, long lead time. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was watching a bunch of old uh, WWF challenge shows, and uh, it was the build to WrestleMania three. And I was watching the January show, and they were they were going to start to do the angle, you know, Hogan on Piper's Pit, and uh, and like you know, I'm now watching the middle of January, and I'm watching the third week of January, and you know, the announcers are talking about where's WrestleMania going to be this year? I don't know. Where's it going to be? I don't know. It's a mystery. No one knows where it's going to be. They didn't announce the Pontiac Silverdome until the last weekend of January, yeah. first weekend of February. Mm-hmm. They sold 78,000 tickets in like six weeks. Yeah, but that's how, but in those days, you didn't, you, you, you didn't do it. You, that was days, normal. In those days, you Well, I mean, 78,000 obviously wasn't normal because it was like, that was an enormous record for pro wrestling. Yeah. No, but in those in those days, most of the time, you only put tickets on sale a month ahead. That you know, is sure. insane to think about. Yeah. When but you think was, about was, selling just, that many tickets with in six weeks. Yeah, but they 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 would. There's been shows that sold to that in a day. Well, I know not, now not, it's different not quite, now. Not quite seventy eight. Yeah. But even, you know, even even back then, I mean, like no, not seventy eight, but they, you know, the the um. The Hogan Orndorff, I'll bet you that, that that one, which was uh, 61 paid and 64 in the building in Toronto, uh, which was actually more impressive in some ways than WrestleMania because it was a one-market show. Um, that one, um, I don't think the tickets were on sale more than a month or so in advance on that one. You know, it wasn't, you know, that wasn't promoted for months and months or anything like that. That is amazing. They, they were, yeah, I mean, it's just, a, how, I mean, all the big shows had... You know, a month build generally. I don't think that you ever had a show that had like six months build or anything like that back in those days. I mean, when uh, Bruno and I think Bruno and um, the Shea Stadium, they might have had like seven weeks. They might have had that something like that. They might have had some long ones. Ollie and Oki. I don't remember exactly with Ollie and Oki, but I don't think the tickets were on sale that far in advance. But I mean, there was that date was that date was out. You know, well in advance. But that was a rarity. Sports here says, Dave reported the initial plan for WrestleMania this year was for Cody to win the Royal Rumble and then do an injury angle to explain Rock taking his place in the main event against Roman. That sounds almost impossible to believe because it would mean it's WWE only... intended at one point to not have their biggest full-time star wrestle on the most important show of the year due to a fake injury, which is pretty insane. Were they well, going to feature him on the show in some other capacity? No, no, no. He was gone. He was going to come back for revenge later. No, I mean, you couldn't because if he was, the whole thing was is he was around. The injury was to explain why Rock was getting the match without all this controversy. What happened was when they decided not to injure him because he was going to replace um, Punk when Punk got hurt against Seth Rollins, when that was the idea, they decided against injuring him, and that's when everything backfired. But they knew that the only way the Rock thing, the original idea, the only way the Rock thing was going to work is you had to explain Cody not being there. And Rock was going to basically step in for the injured Cody and be, 
you know, Cody's big brother and everything like that, just, you know, in that in that feud, you know, with, when those guys all took out Cody. I mean, that was the idea. But if Cody was there as a referee or Cody was there as a guest this or that, then it would be completely stupid. So that was that was their way around it. And then when they decided he was going to face Punk, I mean, he was going to face uh, Seth, um, they decided against doing the injury angle. So that was that. Um, and the feeling was is, you know, him winning the Rumble would lead to the title match when he came back. So that was the original idea. Yeah, yeah. But no, he could not. He could absolutely not be at WrestleMania. Um, and they didn't think that they needed it. I mean, if they had Rock and Roman Reigns, did they think they needed Cody? And, and, and Seth and CM Punk, which was going to be CM Punk's, you know, first major match, uh, they thought those were both big enough. They didn't need Cody. And, and legitimately, if they didn't have Cody, they'd have been fine. But, you know, things worked out the way they did, and they ended up, it ended up, it ended up better than anyone planned. So it all worked out. All right, one more here. Any updates on the Phil Baroni murder allegations? Nothing. I haven't heard anything on that in God knows how long. Wow. Years. Years, yeah. They were leaving that long? It's been a couple of years, oh so yeah. Wow. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.